This is OpenAI's Agent Builder, a tool to help you create your own agentic workflow. In today's video, I'll show you how to use this and give you a few examples on how it works, like use Shopify MCP to get the products from a Shopify online store. To start, go to platform.openai.com forward slash agent dash builder. And in this page, you have two ways to start, either by creating a new workflow from scratch, and that's what we're going to do. Or you can use the following templates. You have data enrichment, planning helper, customer service, structured data QA, document comparison, or internal knowledge assistant. I highly recommend you guys look at this template. They're very good at explaining what it does and why it works. So you can just look at them. For example, let's look at structured data QA. As you can see, you have the, I'm not supposed to show this, so I'm just gonna go back because I wanna start from scratch, okay? But please just look at these templates. They're very good. Let's just create a new workflow create a new workflow, click the create button, and this is the agent builder canvas. On the left, you have the nodes, you have the core nodes like the agent, the end, the node. You also have the tools, file search, guardrails, MCP. You also have logic nodes like the if, else, while, and the user approval. And lastly, you have the data nodes, transform and set state. At the bottom, you have the actions, you have the pen, you can press P to change it to pen mode, you can do this. You also have the select to select one or more nodes, just like that. And you can just organize them however you want. And you also have the undo and the redo button. At the top, you have the publish button. If you are done, you can just click publish. You have the preview button if you want to test your workflow. You have the code if you want to integrate this to your own infrastructure. You have evaluate and you also have the following three dot buttons to see your duplicate button, rename and delete button. Okay, so let's start with a very simple workflow. Here in the canvas, you have two nodes. You have the start node and you also have the agent node. And to start, this is where you'll find your input variables. This is where you'll find your input as text that's going to be there by default. But you can also find here your state variables. You can define a new variable and set its data type to string, number, boolean, object, or list. You can just set its name to, for example, f name. And we're not going to set its default value because what I want to do is show you that you can use the state variables in the preview. So let's just click the agent and change the instructions to something like, oh, I deleted it, sorry. <laughs> and here in the instructions, you can just say, you are an assistant that helps users get answers, <laughs> obviously. And make sure you address the user first by their first name, okay? And Instead of first name though, we can specify the variable or the state variable fnum. It's supposed to be f name, but whatever. Just an example, okay? And we can change its model from GPT-5 to something else like GPT-5 Nano, Mini, um, GPT-4.1 if you want that. So let's just change it to GPT-4.1 for the sake of this video and we can just click preview. And now here, you'll find your state variables and you can change its value to whatever you want. For example, my name. And I can just say hi. And this time, our agent's going to respond, hello Bernard, how can I assist you today? So that is an example of state variables, okay? Now let's move on to the end node. The end node, that's just going to end the conversation. That's it. We also have the notes, if you wanna take notes or you can just explain what's happening in each node. For example, this is the start of the workflow. Pretty basic, you just put it right over there. That is the note node. Next one, we have the file search. This is this is the node that lets you retrieve data or information from your file store or your file vector store, okay? We're gonna try this later on, specifically here in the agent. So here you have tools, you can click plus and you have here the MCP server, the file search, the web search, and the code interpreter. Let's start with web search. And I'm just gonna put here my website. So HTTPS weeklyhow.com. And I'm just gonna leave the user's location empty. I'm not gonna change anything there. Click add. And now I'm just gonna change the instructions to you are an assistant that helps users get answers. Uh, honestly, okay, fine. Let's just leave it like this, okay? 
And now we can just click preview and say how many course, how many course is there from Weekly How. And there we go. The response is there are four distinct courses currently available on Weekly How as per their official website. That is the web search tool. The next one is the file search. This one is pretty interesting because you can upload documents or PDF files or Word files or Excel files and it lets the agent go through those files. So for example, let's upload two files. And these are just PDF files or CVs that I prepared for this video. Let me just attach them. And we can just get rid of the web search here because we don't need that anymore. And we can just go back to the preview and say, hi, is Bernard using JavaScript? And now it's gonna go through the files. And yes, Bernard is using JavaScript. According to his resume, JavaScript is listed among his technical skills. There you go. What about Marisa? And that's going to go through other files, the second file that I uploaded. And based on the available information, Marisa's Meyer's CV does not directly mention JavaScript. There you go. So that is file storage or file search. <laughs> now let's move on to the next node and that's the guardrails. This one is pretty, pretty interesting. In fact, this is very important because you should always use guardrails, especially if you plan to publish your workflow and let others user use your workflow because it lets you filter out information that is not that are not supposed to be sent to your agent or to your model so here if you take a look here you'll find personally identifiable information you can open the settings and you'll find here the person name email address phone numbers location you can enable them and if the user provided the following information then the PII is gonna get triggered and now it's going to fail, okay? So if I click add, you'll see pass and fail. So now what's gonna happen is if guardrails pass, then it's going to continue to my agent. And if it fail, what do you wanna do? Obviously you're gonna end the conversation. So let's just connect start and guardrails. And now if we go back to the preview and say, hi, my name is John. If I send this, and there you go, she can say it failed because I provided a name. So that is guardrails. Very important, especially if you wanna make sure that users don't upload like weird photos or you know what I'm talking about, not safe for work content. So again, always use guardrails. Now let's move on to MCP. What I wanna do in this video is connect my Shopify online store, my development online store, and let users go through my products. If a user wants to find like a product related to, I don't know, uh, beds or shoes, then my chatbot would then ask those questions. Are you looking for this kind of shoes? Is this what you want? And then it triggers the Shopify MCP. So that's what I wanna do, okay? So let's just send the output of start to my agent. And instead of using the file search we're going to use mcp server and then here in the other developers as you can see here you have so many mcp servers or tools that you can use you have gmail you have calendars you have g drive you also have third-party servers like box zapier which is pretty cool and of course the shopify that i mentioned earlier you can also connect your own server here if you have one so let's just use shopify and i'll just type weekly how at myshopify.com and that's going to establish connection and you'll have tools like search shop catalog get cart update cart you also have the faqs and product details you can also customize this by adding widgets so if your chatbot decided to use the following tools then it's going to be displayed differently so you can learn more about this by clicking the create and you'll be able to find components that you can use and download. We're going to do that later on. Let me just click add. And what I wanna do next is change the instructions to you are an assistant that helps users get the products that the user is looking for, okay? We can just click preview and we can ask something like, hi, I'm looking for a bed. 
that's then going to use the Shopify MCP. There you go, as you can see, it used the catalog search. You can just approve this, and now what it's going to do is find those products. And there you go, we have here are a couple of beds I have found. Please note that these are pet beds, specifically banana cat bed. Now what I wanna do next is change the output of the agent. Currently it's set to text, but you can actually change this to JSON or widget. So I'm going to click widget, and then what I'm gonna do is create a new widget and describe my widget. Create a widget to display a product and its details. And this is going to create a widget and this is gonna take some time. So what I'm gonna do is, and there you go, we have the result and this is the product card. What you're gonna do next is download this and then go back to your workflow and upload the file that you just downloaded. We can just close this and go back to the preview and type here, hi, I'm looking for a bed. And that's going to use the following tool, click approve and you'll have a result. And there you go, we have the following widget. So that is OpenAI's Agent Builder, a tool that you can use to build your very own agent workflow. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, give this video a like and subscribe to Weekly Health for more AI-related videos. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.